start recording um yeah so second i think what's completely doable is using the cnc mill as a cnc mill like the spindle on on the universal axis if you can call it a mill for a cnc hole hole drill i don't see why not because you're just going up and down we got a lot of weight and force in that you don't have to worry about the lateral forces so we we get it in cad and we we either like generate the g-code manually or genu generate it using which in itself is a great lesson or we do it out of exporting out of freecad which has got the path workbench or some other tool chain but even in a minimum viable product generating the turning that into a manual understanding g-code lesson would be awesome so we take that to the mill and then drill the holes out all we need there is a holder i think I think the holder is as simple because we have a magnetic plate, put two magnets sa sandwiched and just put it on all four corners and you can do the holes in a circuit board using CNC drilling. And that'll be super cool. And then you're, that's the hard part really of doing a circuit. Like if you have those holes and you pop in the Atmega, Atmega 328 chip and to draw, to draw the lines between that, like, you first draw the lines, and you etch it, and then populate your circuits. But, I mean, that's trivial. It's going to be fun, too. I think, yeah, yeah. think that would be super cool. For sure. And uh, for people who never did anything with electronics, yeah, to, to end up with a, a working circuitry, it would... Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the value, value is you, you built, built, built your own universal axis... axis built your own spindle designed your spindle holder and then you you generate a g code you cnc cnc drilled then drew lines which is artistic so this is a seam right we're in a seam camp right engineering and art <laughs> you drew it there should be an a in there somewhere <laughs> Well, well, there, there is. is. That's, That's the art, right? right? Yeah, 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 it is. Seam. Um, drew your circuit. Then you put it in a bath. And then etch it. And then do the agitation. Agitate with, you can call it eco fluid on the universal axis. Uh, there's ferric chloride, which is a traditional thing, which is really nasty. Then there's copper chloride, which you can recycle. So that's like the eco-friendly way to do it, so you don't have to throw it down the drain or anything. Uh, but I think that, that tool chain, like if we can accomplish that on a second day, like that one sense, build your universe. So we built our universal axis, the first one. Then we built our own spindle using the design, collaboratively designed spindle holder. Uh, we generate CNC, <coughs> generate G-code, CNC drill. <laughs> drew the circuit, etched it, and then we soldered, and solder, and then get a blinking light, get a working uh, working Arduino. In fact, in the Arduino for, form factor, Arduino Uno. That's awesome. We can actually use that for a future, uh, for like the forthcoming experiment. So Tom's... I don't know why Tom didn't show up. I'm, I try to text him why he he was supposed to join us. Um, well, it depended. Uh, he said like he was going to the farm and didn't know if he would get a good internet connection. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I mean, he has... That's the, that's the place. So for where it is, we're supposed to do it there. He's got internet of 10 meg over there. But I don't know why he's not showing up. That So we were going to test the, the internet as part of the program here so we know that he can connect. Um, so, so I think day two, so can you guys learn all of that? Can we all come up with that? Like I would start yeah. drawing that up immediately and, uh, you know, maybe going through a practice run of that. We definitely want to practice that, but you guys, uh, uh, at least a few times, I think, uh, yeah. we should have it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mastered. Yeah. Yeah. Have it no. mastered that we've got. So we're actually populating mm -hmm. the one, the chip and the headers, like the, four sets of headers so it's a bunch of soldering there uh and we don't have to even solder like all the pins on the headers we can just solder the few critical ones but 
at the point one inch spacing that's completely doable for some people it might be hard to do the soldering on a first time but for the the chip itself i think the chip is easier uh wait what's the spacing yeah both the headers and the chip itself they're point one inch right is that so is that about right yeah yeah both of them are point one inch yeah, the, the chip is that. One inch for uh, the, the length of the chip, or the space between the pins on a chip is is so, yeah, point one inch, uh, which is two point four. Yeah, point one inch. Yeah, yeah. Two point five four, which 5. like a pen is a you know if you draw with a pen, it's a mm -hmm. to, to that kind of accuracy by hand is completely doable. So I I would kind of go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a full day. Now let's see what do we say for day three i actually split that up see because collaborative design and getting that free cad to 3d printed parts using our 3d printers i mean we can spend all day on on building the mill uh if we do the collaborative design exercise part libraries whole design workflow like talk all about cover all of that um and then we're actually doing sample we can possibly do the G code there, like sample G code, like move, you know, just mill a couple of holes. And I think we can spend a day playing with that. And I don't know, what, what do you guys think? And then break apart the actual Arduino Uno for the third day. Um, potentially. So the first day, you would build one uh, axis. Well, no, the whole, the whole simple. Yeah, the whole simple, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. day one. So day one is more than enough. Now day two, maybe like we spill into just actually using the, like maybe talking about calibrating the printer and nozzles and printing and... Um, yeah, and focus on design and uh, the, all the collaboration tools and, pro and tool, um, pathways and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So day three is more like, so let's see. So, but day two, we're gonna add this spindle. Yeah, and then day three would be the electronics. Yeah. So if we had the spindle, we could pr 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 prepare to work on the electronics. I mean, they're l learning to build a spindle mount really just so that they can draw a few precision holes in, in the thing, uh, and then um, yeah. perhaps we'll use it in the next day. Uh, but to mount the spindle, we have to design the spindle holder first. And they, uh, it has to be printed also, the spindle holder. So is that doable, like in, all in the second day? And then in the third day, we can already use it to, to drill the holes. Or how do you see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually. So, so, I mean, it doesn't actually need uh, uh, to be um, drilling on, on day two. It could be um, just design and iterate and troubleshoot and learn that process. Uh, um, and then get the work, get the working one, because then on on day three, that would start with actually using it to drill the holes and move, be moving on to the electronics build. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, and the night between two and three, we can build the, the sev uh, we can print the several designs, maybe. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, but all the printers uh, could be running on. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, com compare and uh, make it uh, make it work on the third day, beginning of the third day. Then do the drilling of the the electronics board. Yeah. Uh, well, troubleshooting and, and iterating on or uh, getting the printer build solid for for both. Yeah, like I think day two, like start with like robustify the printer, like get the get the printer working nicely. But I think it would be important to get get to the first have have everything have the mill mill part built because. If we're gonna do the the electronics, like if we focus day three on electronics, I mean that that I think what I described the process. I mean that's all day. I think, like if you're gonna include soldering in there, yeah, uh, if if we include did. some some keycat, I mean I would like to throw in some keycat and I'll see how much I could learn or get somebody else. But basically, where you got you get really comfortable going between. Here's KiCad. Here's like, 
okay, I got to put all these components on a circuit. What happened to the 3D printed circuits? That we didn't talk about that. Okay, but let's talk about that. Um, yeah, 3D, 3D printed print circuits. Okay, we... let me show you this. Because that's another cool thing. Uh, circuits. Take a look at some of these, but but starting with terminal blocks and look at the examples on the bottom, the bottom green. Bottom left is the green. Oh, I got to plug in. Like that kind of stuff where we design terminal blocks because this is relevant for the welder the, or the, the power electronics experiments. So Tom is going to do the, like the switching switching Arduino controller Arduino connecting to to a rectifier which takes to 120 DC and then you're chopping it up to get like a light controller light dimmer for example so you're chopping it up that would be like day four power electronics start ba battery packs and all of that I think Tom can handle that pretty well but on day three I would do like we would have plenty between the Arduino. I don't know. I think that's even like we can end off with talking about how we design. There's KiCad. There's hand drawing. Um, and let's talk about maybe okay. What if you got to do a larger circuit? We we got large components like for, for example, example the motor, motor controller, controller, or like welders with terminals. I think to do some stuff around like 3D printed terminals, screw downs. I think that's cool. Uh, so you're mounting wires and you're populating components. So basically, kind of like the control panel where we you just put all the holes for mounting all the components, and you can solder on the back. I think that's completely useful. We could even experiment th with this idea of of uh, like modular circuits where, say, you've got through-hole components with leads. What if we print channels on the back and you put in a plug, like a uh, you got two channels, you put the wires in there, and then you put a plug in it. The plug is like, you know, say a pen, like this pen, it's a small plug, it's a little thing, but you put it like, you clamp it, you put it down, and it and it makes a phys solid physical connection that you'd have to like pry it out to get, at, get it out. So you make these quick, pro rapid prototyping circuits that could be relevant yeah, for soldering. a lot of stuff. That does wouldn't require soldering even. I mean, I was thinking about that as a, like if you 3D print circuits and you've got plenty of leads and literally you can like tie them together, like wind them around together a bunch of times and cut them off and that'll be like viable. But to put it like then fold it up and put it in this little channel where it's like where you punch it down. I mean, these are concepts that we're throwing right now, but what if we turn it into a conceptual design exercise, like practical prototyping exercise where you have to think about tolerances and and electrical connections like what do you think of that like we can definitely add something like that which would be interesting it would be more more about design where we're designing these little channels and maybe rapid prototyping them and things like that yeah i think that's uh, a good, uh really cool um do you think would you have like um, a simple circuit like a uh, simple analog circuit or something you have a circuit in so, mind that you would want to try and build that way or? yeah actually so we could be yeah. We could start gearing up for. So let me show you. Be like a stepper motor driver circuit Actually, or something welder. that. Uh, the welder. The welder or the light dimmer. So. Um, look at this. Yeah. Okay. So go to this working doc page two so this is what we want to do we want to do a welder a simple welder and what I would do is I would put it on a 3d printed board and 3d print the terminals right into that board so you got wire connections coming in 
then you can make through holes for mounting components. So something like this is what we want to do for the, the prototype welder. So we can start designing that which is for day four. And that would actually be good print for overnight. Just print some of these control panels. Um, we have up to, well, we have control panel size because we can do the 4D printing concept on a D3D simples. So we have like ability to make like a six by 12 board. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use that the next day to do the actual welder. Uh, but we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves because then day three with the electronics and Arduino, there's plenty to do there. But I think we can, you know, after we write it down on paper and get a more detailed flow, like kind of we're going through the concept right now, but we got to get it down to the hour and stuff. Um, yeah. But I think there's plenty between that, like the 3D printed circuits, the Arduino, the drilling of the hole pattern. Day two is collaborative design and getting to the first useful 3D print, which is in fact the the mini drill, which that's what I put in the initial uh, steam cam curriculum, do a useful print. Uh, or we can do another useful 3D, like, I still like the, the hacksaw holder, that or maybe we do both of them and so so I, even little allen key wrench like screwdriver kit like i like that yours has it's just like a handle for the allen key that you know turns into more useful yeah 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 so maybe do a couple of um so on day two get like in a collaborative design session like we're like bam as soon as we can just take that to a printer like quick little prints um quick useful prints yeah, like those holders. Well, um, I want to look into it further, but uh, if we could, like several techniques, eh? hand draw circuitry, something small, maybe uh, a little circuit using a strip board. That's also like a, a good technique for uh, prototyping and making simple circuitry. Then you have a 3D printed circuit. If we could uh do simple circuits on several and several techniques but together when you um, attach them to each other you have like a bigger circuit for uh, welding or whatever so then uh, we can look into the several techniques of making electronics by yourself combining them and making uh something that is useful how uh, like I don't know uh, which technique we should use for the Arduino, maybe the hand drawn or maybe the, the strip board. Uh, but I think we, we could get into several techniques and that the people really get a, a feeling for electronics and uh, yeah, know that there, that there are several techniques that they can master within one or two days uh, building the whole, the whole uh, thing. And printing like the the connectors and using them in the circuitry that they made themselves. Um, yeah. Well, I think what fits that bill of showing multiple pieces coming together. So the Arduino would be mounted on a 3D printed circuit. We built the Arduino. We've got 3D printed terminals. We've got stuff. I'm just not. And and, and I, I could, could see that, that being a functional, functional product. product. You, you just, just need to weld a a uh, 3D, 3D printed, printed case around it, and that, that could, could be an experiment, um, could be part of the pro. I'm, I'm just not, like, we can do the breadboard, but I don't see the breadboard, like, I'm not trying to stick... a breadboard, a strip board. What's, What's a... A strip board is like, uh, just like with copper, copper okay. bands, and then you can, uh, uh, you can stretch away the copper at certain points. To interrupt can, you, the, can you send the link? And then, um, uh, strip board. You just Google strip board. Then you see okay. the, the product. That's what I've used for uh, the, um, the, um, the controller, the speed controller for the motor. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, that's, a, that's a very simple technique. You make like uh, wire connections. You use the copper connections. You can um, uh, break them up. And then you can do uh, wire connections. And you can make like circuitry pretty fast. You can solder on it. Um, so for, oh, wow. Yeah. Can you get that so you can just populate in the Arduino chips? Arduino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can put the Arduino, uh, the Atmega, or... Is, is it as is compatible with the spacing of... Uh... Yeah, 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 the spacing is uh, for the the, uh, the feed of, of chips. I've put a 555 uh, on it. Uh, well, that's actually time, practical, time yeah. Around. Is there any open source software for, for Stripboard? Um, I see Vericat, VCAD, which is sounds proprietary. Uh, um, I think you can do, do you it know in VCAD too. VCAD, wait, I'm gonna search for it. Before. Do you know if the spacing of the strip board is such that for the headers they would actually it would be compatible with existing Arduino shields, or or we're, we would be lucky to do to get that because it'll be interesting. I, I would hope that the Arduino guys made it initially compatible with a strip board. Um, there's, a, yeah, it could be. Let's see, is a strip board compatible um, with Arduino? Uno. Well, I've, I've Googled now strip board meets uh, KiCad. A uh, strip board KiCad, and there's a Hackaday uh, project using KiCad to design and layout strip board PCB project. Uh, wait. I'm gonna put in a link. So yeah, there's people have been looking into that. Yeah. Uh, no, so, yeah, it we'll doesn't look good. Veroboard has regular horse spacing, and Arduino doesn't. I'm um, looking at an Arduino thread. What I'm saying is, can you take the pattern of existing holes and put them on top of an Arduino Uno? Oh, yeah, okay. But hmm. initial the, quick uh, search says no, but maybe maybe that's not right. Um, no, but that's actually really cool. That's uh, I've actually never done a strip board. But that would be useful. I, I could not bread... Yeah, they, but forget about breadboard, for right? Because breadboard yeah, is... Yeah, no breadboard, no breadboards. Uh, but strip boards you can use to make actual electronic circuitry. Yeah. Uh, uh, like if you a one-off or something, or uh, yeah. for simple simple stuff, it's uh, sufficient. No, that's cool, that's cool. I'm, I'm into that, because um, that meets our spec of like simple stuff that's actually usable, like for real and practical. Because people get all excited about you know circuit milling but like probably whatever someone wants to make they could do on a vero board you know easier or whatever um so circuit mill is like we can say well that's the next advanced step next more advanced step uh for circuit milling so so we can spin that whole story um it would be good to connect oh yeah connect strip board to keycad uh, yeah we could, well Keycad, like a simple keycad lesson. Well, we could do we can do the the hand drawer Arduino, and we can do the strip board Arduino. The chip is only a dollar. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And uh, yeah, would would be huh. very. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to doing it. I do. <laughs> so, I am too, man. So um, I think uh, for the for the people following the camp, uh, it would yeah. Yeah, nice. and we could even we could even hack the strip board um, with our CNC mill to make sure it has the same. It could be compatible with Arduino Uno, so mm -hmm. that could be we could do this hack on a strip board. So so we use the holes from the strip board already, but we just add a few more for the headers, or or something like that. We use one one row of headers because one row is going to be good, and then we just drill a bunch of holes for the other in the location that it needs to be at. Are you sure that the, that the quick search uh, the, said like I was looking at it? 
Because um, here I see like a, a strip board shield for an Arduino. Oh, is it? Uh, but I don't think if uh, I don't know if it's custom made. I don't think so. Wait, well, uh, put in the link. Is it a custom strip board or the same one? Well, I, uh, I don't know. I haven't read it all. Uh... I don't know. It looks like it's standard. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What's it say? From to build a small Arduino shield, shield from, from strip board. board. Yeah. It only uses some of the Arduino pins, but yeah, it's somehow it is compatible. So. Well, it uh, looks like the spacing. Yeah. Looks like the spacing does fit. I, it should, it should because it's the standard spacing for uh, for pins. <laughs> well, of course, I mean those uh, pins fit, but the distance between the rows, like did Arduino Uno design it so that they with the per with the strip board in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. But it looks like it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. Well, yeah. that's awesome. I'm learning. You can combine uh, several techniques. That would be nice. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. Str strip uh, board. Yeah, strip board shield. Yeah. Uh, so not only can we make the Arduino, we can make a shield with it. And yeah. you do that all in, in this <laughs> nine days of your life, which is way beyond the skill set of so many people. I mean... I couldn't do that. Um, I'm 48. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna start learning it. Okay. Um, awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you said nine days. You're planning a full nine days. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 I didn't really I, because you said like it w was going to be a shorter period. Well, no. Uh, we still uh, we still want to prototype the full event because the five days we can do plenty on uh, Pi Tablet. We don't have a problem with that. That's yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Which we should discuss. We, we do want to do is discuss what we're going to do there. Okay, so day four is largely dependent on on Tom, but it sounds like he's, I mean, he's he was actually a professional power electronics designer. He's done this stuff. Uh, so he was kind of schooling me on how to do a welder. But, but we were talking about the idea of doing a 3D printed circuit board with connections and then uh, the Arduino running in the simplest implementation you're basically taking the battery pack you plug it into the the power board that I showed you the 3d printed power board mm -hmm. so we're going to be making battery packs that we still need to like there's simple designs we can do so we can hack that up and do a robust design that can be actually stacked right mm -hmm. so we connect six batteries in C in uh, parallel because however many people show up six twelve people we connect six to twelve battery packs and plug them into the as the inputs of the to the power board the Arduino there you don't need rectification because it's already DC the Arduino sends a signal to a transistor that just chops that on and off to to regulate that voltage so you can actually control the welder power we would build our own simple electrode like so diy electrode um it's a very simple thing welding rod holder um, Take a look so at this. The battery uh, is the, the, the standard uh, lithium. Yeah, 18650, yeah. yeah. That go in a drill and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so we make a battery pack. Uh, that's the welder. You just chop it up. Like it's a simple experiment. It just shows that. Well, actually, that experiment, we can do both the light dimmer. Tom and I, we talked and we said the light dimmer is super easy. That will be rectifying. You plug in 120 AC from the wall. So you're actually plugging in wall power. You rectify it. And then the Arduino, based on what code, code, like we can have a button like for regulation. 
Um, but using the Arduino that we made, we can just program it and, and do it like 10% duty cycle and just on and off and it'll be a very dim light. You know, so that showing that, that people can do that right with code, not even a knob, just upload the code. Um, we can try the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller on the Universal Controller, but I don't know how to program it yet. Uh, we can we can do a simple thing like where you select the power for the light or power for the welder, but mm -hmm. it's beyond me right now. I don't know, Chris, you know anything about that kind of programming? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's, um... I'm like I imagine could figure it out. I haven't done uh, played around with it in a while, but but yeah, that that could be something I could look into. Um, uh, do you want to try for the future? Are you super busy here, not for this one, or? I mean, um, I'm super busy, but I mean, I I feel like um, Maybe there's a lot for me to learn from else uh, in in the rest of this, but that is somewhere yeah. I do think I could contribute. Um, I think but, the minimum, yeah. That would be nice, but maybe save it for the next ones. We can say, okay, now... I could come up with some, some sort of uh, Arduino programming um, like a, uh, exercise. Because... Uh, uh, yeah, because we're going to be doing like... So the Arduino programming would be in, in the simple sketch to turn on the duty cycle. That's that. Uh -huh. The step above that is actually using a nice external device like the smart control, which we already have in a control panel. So we have to yeah. know how to activate that and make it print whatever it wants to print. It's not hard. It's something you could figure yeah. out. Like as a practical lesson, you can probably say, okay, include this library for the, the smart controller and then print. You know, it's going to be as simple as like print. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then if you have, the, I don't know, like how you can, I don't know what the commands there are for like turn the knob, like read knob, and so it's a little program there, read knob, and you know, make it go blah blah, blah whatever. But but yeah, for the minimum people product, like the simplest sketch would be just a duty cycle change, and you just upload it to the Arduino. That would be that would be acceptable. Um, Especially if we go at the effort where people are just like getting right in there and they're doing it super hands on. So, yeah, we don't have to have it. There is a lot, maybe like save it, just don't overwhelm ourselves with that uh, for the event because the simple sketch, which we, you know, I, I can do that, uh, that, that we can already do. So, be doable. Uh, but there's the welding electrode holder so it's a simple thing that's diy built like costs like a dollar or two so we connect the the welding rod to this so you got battery packs on one side welding electrodes on the other side if you don't do if you even don't have the arduino and chopping in the middle it could still it still works but what the chopping does is it can regulate the power like you can do say oh without the chopper you get like this full welder power, but then you would see, oh, if you chop it up, you get like a better or like lower power weld. And people can see that. You can see that clearly. Um, so I think that would be a useful experiment. J or just getting the idea of this, of this transistor being controlled by an Arduino. With a more advanced program, so Tom was going to go into battery charger. A battery charger would be where we take whatever power source and then we you just put a logic sequence in it like how long do you do it like you would have to measure the voltage on the batteries themselves so we get a little feedback I don't know if we're gonna get that for the charger we might because Tom I mean Tom is working on it he doesn't um, he works half time but w he's gonna pull together the welder thing so basically the circuit for what what transistor we use and all that just specking that all out and and prototyping that so we should be good on that do you guys feel comfortable about so so making battery packs that's that we can all figure out right yeah that's simple I like um, there's 3d yeah. printed design like 3d printing design for the case so we get get onto freak out yeah. again and then there's the making that that whole control panel uh, with screw down terminals which there might be some prototyping we get like you know, quarter-inch set screws, or if you want to do fat terminals, 
we can actually experiment with like half inch set screws for like four odd cable terminals you can print that readily i was got, gonna actually do that for a junction box i was gonna 3d print like fat this thing that would be like this where you put in like these big cables uh, and use set screws on it that would be 3d printed but the control panel here this power panel like if you have a uh, like 200 amps that's the kind of wires you want to have like you want get, to be getting to like four odd wires uh, mm -hmm. close to that so we can we can experiment with screw down terminals I think it's fun just to see a screw screw down where you either print the threads or tap it um, tap it for the threads uh, did you guys like that um, the two two in one tap yeah, that looked awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, was, that was amazed. Like I, I didn't know if you, you could. It's called power tapping, but using a regular tap, it's called power tapping. There's. A, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, drill and, and tap in, in one uh, movement. Yeah. Yeah, a page called tapping on a wiki shows a professional guy how he does a regular tap, just pre-drills a hole and then he does it on a drill press. It's not an amateur technique, but yeah, how to power tap, that's a good one. I didn't know that, but I was thinking, like, see, because basically what happens there, once once you catch the tap, the drill press pulls it in by itself. You don't have to worry about even pressing it down. Once you catch it, it just does it. So it's like, it took me like an hour to tap one of mine. You can do it in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's good news, because I thought that was hard. It's not um okay so i think day four i think we've got plenty like on a welder like if tom takes the show on that and he couldn't be the presenter and we just build stuff you know that would be a way to collaborate across countries yeah so one of my my question was too is uh what do we want to uh we have uh try and weld with the welder once we get the uh, welder uh online okay so what's what are we gonna do what can we do yeah, i think we should be build up for something that we're oh we can weld is there any welding that the D3D needs or that any, like, what the next big axis would be? I mean, what could we build up to welding, like? Um, bike. <laughs> we have a welder, what we do with it? No, that's, yeah, a, good yeah. one. that's a really good one. Um, right. Because um, the Arduino could, is we're building, well, then we could use the welder. We could use the Arduino for the, um, with the, with, with Raspberry Pi. Well, no, it's a Raspberry Pi tablet, but we could build. We could build up one. Could build it in the center. But, uh, we could weld the tablet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's. I mean, the tripod. You could weld the tripod for the. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, um. I don't know. I want to think about. <laughs> weld tripod out of eight millimeter rods. Oh, how about <laughs> this? Weld two eight millimeter rods together for a rod extension. That might be doable. Maybe. And <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No. It's like a hard exercise to start with. Well, actually, um, <laughs> it's not hard if you have the technique, actually. So, but we would need to something to hold it. Like, you need to hold two pieces. First, you have to, like, chamfer the ends, which we're good at, right? Uh, mm. But you just put them together, like, in a vise. And if you just weld them, yeah, they just, they just do it. Like, if you weld it, it, it might pull to one side or another. Mm -hmm. Um but mm -hmm. then if it's in a vice you start it you do it a little bit and then just check for straightness and to check for straightness all you need is like having a flat table you know but hey we mm -hmm. can try that try try to weld two eight millimeter rods together like say you got I mean, that could be practical for some i mean it takes it's not practical in terms of time because it's like the amount of time it takes you to do it it's probably not worth it but if you have to do it mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. We can try, but other than that, we can just take two little scrap pieces of eight millimeter rods, and people could just try to weld them together in nasty ways or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exercise, uh, weld eight millimeter. Yeah, yeah, rods. yeah. Yeah, I would like to try that. Yeah. Uh, about uh, the battery packs, uh, how much batteries uh, do we need? Six uh, batteries per person. Uh, but for for uh, welding, uh, how much batteries in total? Oh yeah, well I mean, it's like you get like a minute. Yeah, how many minutes? 
Okay, they have their. Uh, okay, so let's look at the specs of that. How much does a battery get you? Well, first of all, we're going to have six batteries per person. So if there's six people, I think 36 batteries is enough to run for, I think, like 10 minutes or something like that. Let me see. Uh, 3.7 volts, 10 amp discharge, 10 amps for 18 minutes, 10 amps per cell. So, so each row of six cells at 24 volts has 18 minutes. Now that only gets you like one set of them gets you like 10 stable amps you can get up to 30 like if you got good quality batteries but you stack six of them together so you get 60 to 180 amps the minimum you can weld with for the thin electrodes is like 50 amps 40 50 amps so yeah 18 minutes of um 18 minutes of 60 amps if we combine six battery packs together, assuming six people, 12 people, we got 120 amps for 18 minutes. 120 amps, but we only need 40 or 50. Yeah, 50. We got 120 amps, yeah. We got more than enough. So with six people is minimum for a welder. Five people is minimum for a welder. Five people made battery packs. So six batteries, each battery is like three bucks, so it's like 18 bucks in a battery pack per person, so keeping track of costs. Uh, everything else is relatively inexpensive. So altogether, like, bill materials, 200, about 300 bucks for all the materials we need per person, uh, something like that, including the printer. Printer bill materials is coming out to around 200 bucks, according to my. I did a full, full BOM. I don't know if you guys saw the diagram and the BOM. Yeah, yeah. it's all there. Awesome. Um, so let's. What do you guys? Um, so we think we can deliver a decent experience for people. Um. Yeah, I think so, but uh, nine days is going to be quite some preparation. <laughs> well, we yeah. haven't talked about yeah. the five days of the Raspberry Pi stuff, so <clears throat> I did put an, um, let's take a look at this, let's take a look at what we want to do and what parts do we want to get, so take a look at this document, go into the dock, <clears throat> and from the dock, Modules brainstorming. So what do we want to do in those those five days of project? So what are we going to buy for the supplies? We definitely want to get... Oh yeah, so with the Raspberry Pi, that's another hundred bucks. So touch screen, yes. We want to get... We want a Raspberry Pi. So can you guys jump into that document? Yeah. The uh, specification document? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Modules brainstorming document there. Mm. Yeah, okay. okay. Got one person. So, so things to buy. Basically, it boils down. I mean, what, what we can do is we can brain, I brainstorm a bunch of stuff, but what we can actually do, what I was thinking is the first day, like the night of the first day, four days before we do the three days before we get to the pi we would discuss and with the group kind of think okay what modules do we want to get within our budget so definitely the touch screen and the pie itself right and then what are the other things we're going to do with it so what other supplies and materials are we going to need what uh there, there's going to be a battery pack a person with yeah. uh, uh, already for the for the welding. Yeah. Uh, I think we we should um, 
not have like an internal battery pack, but uh, use the same battery pack to, uh, to power the, the Pi. Isn't that a... Yeah, yeah. So the battery pack is already covered. So besides the Pi and touch screen, we have to decide on what kind of touch screen, um, which one. Um, and the Pi, I guess, would be Pi 3, or four, what is the latest one? Pi 3? Or is there a Pi 4? Is there already Pi 4? It could be. Raspberry Pi 4, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Model B for 4 gigabytes. Thirty-five bucks. Is it? Yeah, Chris. Do you know if we can put an op any kind of meaningful operating system on Pi Zero? Um, you mean other than what it ships with? Yeah, like can we handle a tablet, like a lean Linux system? Um, I would imagine so, but, um, I don't know how, yeah, how lean it would need to be. I mean, um, what, uh, version of Linux does, uh, the Raspberry, does it, does it ship with? Is they have their own distro? Uh, yeah, they have, uh, Raspbian or Raspberry or what's it called? Raspbian. Yeah, I mean, I, uh... Yeah, probably have to get the full... I imagine it's... Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can really save this discussion for later, because is it capable that we, you know, we... I mean, page two's got all the possibilities. Like, I mean, there's a tons of shit we can do. But the general idea is, like, like the high-priority items, what do you guys think? Um, what would be the high priority items to do in this? Like, if we want to do the pi uh, film studio, uh, I mean, definitely a camera module. Camera, yeah, camera module. Um, light. I think a LED. Stabilizer. Light. Yeah. Uh, light, yeah, definitely light, light module. Some, some stabilizer rig is a, you know, th uh, some uh, 3D printed thing. Um, like a thing that that you hold the tablet so you can do like a selfie stick or something. Yeah, kind of like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for for yeah, steady cam type, just um, handle basically. Like a gimbal. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was thinking an unpowered thing. You know, have you seen the weight, the ones that are just weighted well? No. Can you show them? Uh, yeah, let me try and find uh, an example. What, uh, weight, uh, camera stabilizer just with a, a weight to stabilize it? Or... Yeah, that's that's what I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, it's like the, the most basic stabilization and it yeah, works pretty well. Yeah, just a mass. Yeah, when you go to motorize the uh, a gimbal, then the cheapest three motor uh, system I found that you can order, I thought I think it was Banggood or uh, was around thirty thirty dollars uh, for three motors for a gimbal. So yeah, that's uh, that adds to the cost of course. You do it with a yeah, it was, um, something like this. Well, there's a bunch of options there, but it all boils down to the same. You have a steady, you know, it's a, it's a heavy mass underneath the camera. Yeah. Uh, so, um, that's swung around.
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Heavy mass under the camera, like they have those, st like a stick under the camera, that's the mass? Yeah, like this swivel. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. These are all terrible. Yes, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Um, Someone had a professional one I was playing with uh, at some event. It was just like a uh, swoop. That was one of those uh, swoop underneath and had to have you guys just so you could hold more steady. But Okay. Yeah, for That's a design challenge. It could be, like, yeah. For a basic version, uh, it would be yeah, cheap and it would be nice. We could uh, 3D print most of the parts, then use some... Uh, uh, off the shelf uh, metal tubing or something like that yeah check this one out how about an 8 millimeter rod and 8 millimeter bearings that are already in the set I like that do that kind of like what he has there yeah yeah and we just need 8 millimeter threaded rod or uh Something like that. If that's got this bearings, looks adjustable. Should, yeah, if that's got bearings. They should be the I made the roller skate bearings. Okay, camera stabilizer. Yeah. Oh, here's some. Uh... Uh, a tripod with with uh, rods would be probably pretty um, uh, straightforward mechanical. Uh, yeah, project Tri tripod okay maybe a tripod with the extrusions um or with the rods um 3d printed tripod mm. yeah yeah i mean 3 3d printed uh out of small parts it could be a small tripod i think yeah. the exercise there would be make interconnectable pieces so you can make longer things. So mm. it's a design challenge mm. of, okay, here's how we make snap together. Pretty reasonably strong kind of a modular I'm tripod. Sure. No, there's a steady cam there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looks pretty well fair. But it might work. Yeah, we'd have to beef. That. Yeah, I would beef that one up. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's yeah, so definitely a lot of things we can do with the tablet, um, and I'm guessing in five to nine days we can. Well, if anyone got caught up on something or is particularly interested in something else, we could that, that could be a little bit more of a flexible uh, uh, time. I mean, uh, or on the five to nine, on um, the days five to nine, um, you know, it's it's a little bit more freeform or or focus on on dev of of, of this. Well. No, I mean this, like the Pi, Pi tablet uh, idea mm. is take it to eventually to a product, something that's actually pretty solid and good. I mean, put it into the open source uh, uh, everything uh, uh, store. Gotcha. Yeah, once again, collaborative design uh, for an economy, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, well, they said so, like, well, I mean, our, our different teams might work on different aspects of it, but... Um, you know, being able to pull from what the other teams are working on, I think will be really a great experience for, for our students. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah, I mean, there's many projects and we can say, okay, what's the most sensible to divide it? Like, if one one team does the case, the other one does maybe does the stabilizer. Um, I wonder if how difficult it is to do a phone inside of the Pi. Like Pi Zero, I mean, there's Pi Zero phone, but I guess it's just a matter of getting parts and cost, cost of parts. But I'm really after a tablet that's got a phone in there. So basically, a SIM card module for a SIM card module for Raspberry Pi. How much does it cost? Um.
3G, 4G. Ooh, 39 bucks. Wow. Looks like for $39 we can, I mean, is that all, wait, but you also need an antenna. Wait, does that have an antenna on it? Dude, looks like for $40 more we could get a phone with 4G. Holy shit. That would be cool. Oh wait, but you also need a mini PCIe module. No, I, I don't know. Yeah, we should look into that. I want to look into that because I was, I mean, I, I really want to get rid of my phone and get to an open source one as soon as possible. And, and that's not coming off the shelf. And if it does, yeah. it's going to be very expensive. So uh, there is an open source phone right now that costs like a thousand bucks or something. <laughs> yeah, quite expensive. Librem 5. It's only... The Zero phone, a Linux smartphone powered by the Raspberry Pi Zero? Yeah, sure. Oh, only $700 for Librem 5. Yeah, Zero phone is not, uh, not out yet, is it? That was, the latest I heard about that was it's on crowd supply in production. Huh. Wow, it's a $50 smartphone holy cow it's on it's on uh crowd supply so yeah i mean probably for uh, i think probably for as little as 50 bucks we can add phone functionality to the pi tablet i mean if the entire pi zero phone is 50 bucks it's foreseeable so I mean, I'm personally quite excited about that possibility. Um, but yeah, we can go a lot of directions with a with a Pi tablet. And even if we just do like nothing but like five solid days of research and get like a gutter punk connection of like a spider web of things that come up to making a phone, hey, we can all put it in a big case that we designed. So we, I, I think to talk about a practical phone is not a not a far cry at this point. I mean. So yeah, I'm gonna call for the phone on that. Uh, it's just a matter of cost. It's like fifty more bucks. And if people want to get that, like, um, somehow I suspect that everyone's gonna want to hijack that project into a Pi phone, <laughs> not a camera <laughs> system. Because I, I would I'd hijack it for a phone <laughs> myself. Uh, but we have to be open to what everybody wants. We we do on the studio. Uh, and we can probably, I mean, if we've got, depending on how many people sign up, if we've got enough people, we can possibly do this basic camera with a phone, too. It'll, it'll be, I mean, it'll work. It might, the question is how practical it's going to be, like how user-friendly, but I think for a first iteration, we can get a thing that can actually start making calls with it, you know, and taking pictures with it. It's all about the workflow, so how refined they're going to be. But... You know, if we can say, oh, wow, we built this ourselves, I mean, I don't know, I think that would be a great experience right there. Um, yeah. I think there's plenty on the Pi tablet that we can entertain ourselves with. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with the 4, Raspberry Pi 4 has two HDMI uh, outputs. So if we want to use it for uh, like a studio uh, kind of tablet, can uh, attach to, uh, to the screen to it. Oh yeah, attach a screen to it, yeah. Yeah, an extra screen. Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, quite expensive. They How much is it? Four, uh, three versions, two giga. Uh, How much? Well, Pi 4 costs like what, 40 bucks, 45? Yeah, for the cheapest one. Yeah. 
and then between like 85 and 60 and 85. Yeah. Well, we just have to put it into the into the cell per, bill price. But yeah, it's a hundred bucks for the tablet. I mean, you can't you can't do less than that. But I think I think it's an expandable base system that yeah people can then upgrade and work with. I think it will be good. I think it'll be worth it. It's modular parts that we can use. All right. Um, what else? I think they're kind of covered. So I, I, I don't know. I think I think this is for a program. I think we've got got a pretty good, pretty good set. Just got to really clear it up and and refine the curriculum to like hour by hour kind of deal. And I think, I don't know, I think we can do a good job. I think we worked well together uh, during the startup camp and could definitely synergize over, over the three countries. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, And maybe do, do like a ghost run through uh, yeah. a couple of weeks beforehand and like pretend we have students here and we'll just all do it, everything all together, talk, talk present to each other, like let's pretend like there's a, uh, uh, make sure that we got all the stuff and have done it all one, you know gone all through it once at least yeah yeah, but yeah i'm feeling uh yeah we got to go through some of the basic experiments first for the pi tablet we'll just get the parts we'll we'll let let it all happen during the event that's fine um yeah since we don't like the etching and stuff we should do first and at least yeah for days one through f four basically that we should do yeah yeah um uh, I'll check in with Tom where he's at on uh, on his part of the welder, and we'll do it. So you guys, um, I feel pretty good. I mean, I'm, I feel good about what we can offer already. I mean, the, the other thing we have to think about is that, like, already what we we all know is like uh, really valuable. We we shouldn't forget that that. It's a matter of how, how smooth and refined the curriculum is, but at the very base level, I think we'll do a good job nonetheless with the experience that we have um so michelle how about you what do you think yeah um uh, i think for for me i want to um now in the coming months i want to focus on the on the several printers uh, especially the, the universal because that's only like one of the, the camp uh, and um, in the documentation want to look into the 3D, uh, 3D WebGL documentation also uh, about the, uh, the control panel um, because that, that's something I have to look into for myself a lot more and while I'm looking into it I want to um, work on the on the documentation 3d documentation that can be useful during the camp okay uh, that's one of the things I want to focus on in the, the next few weeks ordering parts making the, the universal documentation looking into the, the European version uh, and um, yeah, and the electronics like uh, Arduino on a, on a strip board, uh, hand drawn uh, Arduino, things like that. We, we really have to be quite familiar with the, the several, uh, several techniques before we add it to the camp, of course. Yeah, so yeah, lots, lots to do. Lots okay, to study. yeah. And Chris, you're pretty busy. Like this is your busy time until when does it kind of let up for you? Yeah, until um, well, really until the 21st or 22nd or something. That's the final trip day for for stuff. I did a couple other uh, big projects due by January 1st. Basically, is where I'm. Um, um, yeah, over the next two weeks or so, I'm I'm pretty busy. Yeah. 
And then your January is going to loosen up. January is going to loosen up so you can practice for the steam camp. Yes, 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 yes. And I'll be, I need to be doing a lot between now and then too. Um, uh, but, um, but then from then on, uh, January 1st, there'll be like what I'm focusing on. Uh, I mean, that'll be the main thing that I'm planning on doing in January. That's great. Um, yeah. yeah, no, this is good. This is yeah. good. I think we got a lot accomplished overall in, um, in the startup camp and I want to do more of those. And I look forward actually to, yeah. I'm hoping that the steam camp itself will be, we're starting to replicate that kind of experience where people are synergizing and, and cranking out designs. So, so kind of think about how do we make that happen and we got to get really good yeah. at it because if we can scale like what we did with the three of us to more people, that will be very powerful. So Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And people do really, people get a lot of value out of it and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're a good start. We're a good start with three of us. We've got the right energy to do it. And um, mm. the only thing I need, so I'm going to look at, I'm working on an announcement and stripping down the curriculum and defining it uh but i want to publish like tomorrow can you guys just send me the info on uh, i got your bios i guess from the last time but i need a venue like michelle and chris both of your venues you need the address well uh, yeah I address send and... you, uh, already oh you did send you the, the address oh, okay uh, and uh i think it was on on whatsapp okay um i'll pull that i can together. send it in a mail also if you want to yeah, I should have it in the app. Uh, I don't know yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell that to you now. But uh, I got to go, actually. My um, company okay. just pulled up to okay. go ahead and get it. Okay, Chris. Well, thanks. So we'll be in touch, and I'll, we'll yeah. be publishing, like, tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. okay, awesome. I'll be in touch with you guys. Ciao. All right. Yeah, yeah. Take care, Michelle. Yeah. Bye. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, see you too, yeah. Michelle, will just uh, send me the... Well, if you send me already, I'm gonna get some sleep and publish, uh, publish by tomorrow, and mm -hmm. all that. Nice. Yeah, let's just get it going and and get the experience under our belts. Yeah, we're looking forward to yeah to, to the whole pro, uh, process, uh, studying. Uh, yeah. Get, giving the workshops. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I mean by teaching this we're gonna just become masters of it ourselves and really diverse skill set like never before, so I mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well uh I'm gonna gonna look into uh, the the Arduino making the Arduinos with uh with stripboard I think it will it will be pretty easy actually. Yeah. Once yeah, you, yeah. With the strip boards it's nice. You just take a, with, with a knife you can uh, cut up the, the the copper uh, strips and then uh, make uh, uh, wire bridges and that way build simple circuitry it's uh, yeah. yeah yeah sounds good to me we can make an arduino and then make a shield out of uh, the same one yeah that's, that's, that's yeah, cool it's a, it's a, yeah. Yeah, so instead of relying on Arduinos, we can rely on having the, the discrete components, which is much more secure. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. it's nice to, to start off with, with an Arduino, but the fact that you can make them yourself with the yeah. with basic parts, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's important. All right, man. Well, sounds good. So look forward to it. We'll be in touch yeah. and uh, publish. aim to publish it tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. See you later. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Have a good night. Yeah.